is there anything different in terms of preparation that you do, or do you just know them so well that um, it's more comfortable in a way getting ready for this game? Yeah, no, I mean, both teams that know each other really well, obviously being division rivals and uh, we play very similar styles of football. And, you know, I think it, it is what it is. You gotta, you, we both know what we're gonna do. You know, it's just a matter of going out, who's gonna execute better, who's gonna make less mistakes, who's gonna take the ball away, who's gonna protect the ball. Um, and that's how this game will be played. Fred, was the Chiefs loss the turning point in the season because you guys haven't lost since then? I guess so. <laughs> I guess you could say that, you know. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of it was for sure a wake up call for our defense, you know, going out there and not playing to our style. And um, we've we've had to find different ways to win all season long, regardless of if we're on a 10, 10 game win streak or not. Like you see all different types of ways of winning it every single week. Um, so it's been it's been a great great season. Got to keep it going. How big is playoff experience? Because now you're a veteran at this, and there's some guys that haven't been. But you know, maybe going back to your first playoff game to where you are now, how really big is it in the situation? Yeah, no, I think it's it's all about just not making the situation bigger than what it is. Um, you know, I knew that back when I was a young guy, just from the older the older guys like Rich and uh, you know Staley, all those all those guys. And you know, it, at the end of the day, it's still football. You know, you want to you want to play at your best. But that doesn't mean going outside of what you already do. You know, you just got to make sure that you're, you know, really detailed in the way that you prepare. And then when you go out there, you just you play with your hair on fire. What have you seen on tape differences wise compared to the Seahawks when you first played them compared to now? When we last played them or first played them? Let's, let's go with third, third go around now. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, no, I mean, they, I, a lot of the, a lot of the same stuff. Obviously, they want to, they want to run the ball. You know, they want to rely on, on, on Walker to, to, to tote the rock because he is such a, a talented running back and get the run game going to then open up the pass game for, for Gino, uh, DK, Lockett, all those guys. Um, you know, so a lot of the same. There's kind of a sense that the right guy, everybody's healthy right now and that you guys, winners of 10 in a row, you could be playing your best football of this season. But I've also heard some guys in the locker room say we're, we're still not as good as we, as we can be. So is, is there a sense? That, I mean, that's probably how you want to feel going into a game like this. Yeah. I'd say that's more so, you know, it's all about a mindset, right? You know, you're constantly looking for, all right, what, how, how can we just get a little bit better? You know, because we're at the end of this thing now. You, you, can't, you can't always say, oh, we got to get better, we got to get better, because, like, now it, your best is needed, you know. And um, I know guys are ready. We, we are where we're at in this season because of how we've, con we've continued to get better throughout the year, right? And, uh, yeah, I think we're peaking right at the right time. And it's all about how we prepare, you know, and, and cutting that thing loose on, on Saturday, right? I think we've done everything we've needed to do, and it's all about just all, everybody coming together, one heart, one mind, and, and doing it. As takeaways, I mean, I know the takeaways is always a focus, but Kyle said that when you know, you're really familiar with a, an opponent, the, the t games tend to get tighter, and it comes down to the turnover battle. It's going to be rainy on Saturday. Yeah, yeah I mean, turnover battle's been huge for us this year. I think we were number one in picks. and. Maybe differential, I'm not sure. But uh, um, when you look at it, every team who, who is top of the league is good in turnovers, so that, that'll that be huge for us in the playoffs. What has stood out to you about their, their offensive tackle situation, you know, starting the season with the two rookies, you, know, you saw them with two, again, you know, just a couple weeks ago, and now, again, the playoffs, how, how have you seen them change through the year? Um, they've been trying to change up some stuff, uh, but... Uh, I think we played well against them. Um, they're good players. They're going to be re really good for them. Um, but we just kind of have to start fast and, and not give them hope. Nick, was the Chiefs lost a turning point because you guys have a lot of from that? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely it looks like a turning point when you go from three and four to whatever. Um, so, yeah. Ten in a row. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we prepare the same every week. We were close to, we were close in the fourth quarter of that game. Um, we just have executed better and played better. Does this feel different than going into the, the 19 playoffs, going into the 21 playoffs, as far as where this team is right now? Um, yeah, it's always different. Each year is different. Um, kind of feels more like 19 than last year, where we're, we're on a roll um, going in. Or even on more of a roll this year. Um, 19, we had a couple losses towards the end that were um, 
but I mean, the co- confidence-wise, we go into every game with the players on this team, knowing that uh, we have what it takes, and uh, if we don't do it, it's on us. I've heard kind of a sentiment in the locker room that as good as a role as you guys are on right now, you still feel like there's some things that you could do to be better, and that's probably a good way to feel going into the playoffs, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, some things that we need to correct defensively that have kind of been uh, recurring issues for us, and um, and we have to get those right because we're going to play really good teams every week now. Nick, what makes you hear people say that it's hard to beat the same team three times in a season? How true is that? I'd say it is true, just because every team's really good and. Um, and there's always a chance that they could beat you. So um, the more times you play, the more chance they have to beat you. But uh, I said a little earlier, we, we put on some pretty good performances against them. So we have a good idea of how to how to beat them. Have you been visualizing uh, hoisting the Lombardi Trophy in Arizona in a month? Not yet, no. <laughs> Not yet. Nick, how big is experience in a playoff game for where you were your first playoff game today? How much have you learned and how big is it in this game? It's huge. Yeah, I've learned a ton just four years of being in this league and, and knowing the intensity that you have to bring it to. But whenever you have good leaders on your team, they kind of bring you along. And I had that in 19, so I'm hoping to do that for some guys this year. How much of a factor is the crowd at Levi Stadium for you? Do you get like an extra boost of adrenaline from that when you run out on the field? For sure, yeah. Our crowd's one of the best in the league, and they travel as good as anybody. Um, hopefully they don't have to do much traveling this year, but uh, yeah, I mean, having having packed Levi's is a, is a big advantage. When you say lifting the intensity and kind of um, telling teammates how to do that, is that are you going to verbalize that, or is that how, how are you going to be on the field this week in, in practice? Yeah, um, maybe verbalize it. I mean, Fred, we're talking about how to how to approach it and. Uh, um, I think just, yeah, just throughout the week, um, just kind of emphasizing that it's different this week. And and then, I don't know, when you get out on that field and Levi's is packed and um, it's just, there's a different feel to play off football. And I think it, it brings it out of you and you could do that but uh, leading by example as well. Purdue was asked after the game, is this in some ways easier than college? playing as a rookie in the NFL, and he uh, did not dismiss the idea. And, and mind you, he played in the know, Big 12. They don't yeah. play defense in Big 12. Yeah, that's what everybody says. <laughs> I don't know much about Big 12 football uh, being an independent fellow myself. Um, but the fact that he didn't dismiss the idea and said there was some merit to, to some of that, what does that speak to, do you think? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. I think um, certainly it's easier than when you were a freshman. Uh, so the rookie freshman comparison, I don't think is the same thing because especially at a guy like Brock's position or like my position or guys like like that, you know, you start a lot of games in college and you play a lot of football and there are some things that carry over and in terms of fundamentals and and schematics and stuff like that, there are, there's a lot of carryover these days into college from college to pros if you're taught right. And I think, you know, Campbell and his staff have done a great job at Iowa State in that regard. Yeah. Um, so it's d- certainly easier to learn more than learn new, yeah. uh, like you do when you're 17 or 18 years old coming in from high school. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, I, you know, I've never played the quarterback position. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it was a lot harder for me when I was a rookie than, uh, when I, than what I thought college was like. Yeah. Um, but, you know, mine's a little bit more of a uh, man-on-man kind of playing bigger, better, stronger players. And, um, you know, his is a little bit more cerebral, and I'm more power to him. I, maybe it's just the fact that he was here for so long and absorbed so much information, but um, good for him for having that kind of rookie year, no doubt. Um, I would certainly think so. Uh, you know, I think... You know, when you go back and watch that game, the score represents a, a huge loss, obviously, because we, we wound up losing that game by quite a bit. But it was pretty tight up until midway through the third quarter when a couple turnovers and some bad things happened the wrong way. And um, and certainly the final score on that scoreboard t- probably hurts more than um, 
or, or hurts the right way because it, 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 the game got out of hand. And I think, um, one, we got, really, we got a lot healthier post that game. Uh, two, Christian was here for more than 24 hours uh, post that game. Um, and certainly can be a wake-up call. Whenever you lose a game like that, whenever you, you know, have the struggle that we did in that game, um, you certainly it's a little bit of a wake-up call because we weren't playing our best football up until that point. We had, we had you know, I think we were, what, three and four at that time? And for the team that we have here, that was just not okay. And that's not the standard of what we do. And um, we knew we were, we were capable of so much more. Um, and we started building week to week to week after that. And so um, where we're at now is just a product of getting better each and every week and being on, you know, being in the process of, of how you do things and not worrying about wins and losses and results and all that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, in a way, it, it was a wake-up call, but certainly I think it was just a, a matter of all right, staying into what we believe and just cleaning up what we did wrong. And, and we've, uh, we've done that to a, a good degree so far, and I think we can still get better. All right, back to what you were saying about Purdy, and you, you've been around enough quarterbacks to have some perspective. We keep saying you know, a guy with his large, small amount of experience is not supposed to be able to make the decisions and do the things that he does. Is it time to stop thinking about him that way and just say, you know, hey, he's a starting quarterback on a very good team? Yeah, I mean, we stopped thinking about it that way five weeks ago. So as soon as he got into the game, he was our guy. And, um, you know, no matter what you are as a rookie, a five-year vet, 10-year vet, 15-year vet, doesn't matter. If you're the starting quarterback, you have to, you have to do the starting quarterback's job. And, um, and that's what he's done to an unbelievable degree. I think I saw some, uh, some meme or some uh, blurb that he's, like, first in every statistical category since he's taken over, which is pretty impressive. Um, it's certainly very, very difficult to do, um, but like you said, he's on a damn good football team, and we've uh, we've all been clicking, and, and he certainly fell into place and and taking our offense to to, to continue on success. And um, you know, like I said, we stopped looking at him as the, as our rookie quarterback five weeks ago when he took over, and he's uh, and I think he's he stopped looking at himself like that probably when he got drafted. So um, you know, he's done a great job. You can't say enough good things about him. Um, but this season's just getting started, so now it's now it gets even more important. Mike, what are the challenges of playing the same team three times in the same season, or does it make it easier in a way because you know them so well? Um, I think it makes it easier in a way that, you know, in, in terms of your nerves and in terms of, you know, because a lot of the nerves come from the unknown of what's going to happen, and, and I think the two of us, we've played Seattle, you know, obviously, 10 times in the last five years in the regular season. And then this is, I think, my first postseason game against them. Um, but yeah, three times in a year makes it really difficult because, you know, there's so much tape of what you, what everybody does that, you know, whoever's on it the best um, normally comes out and wins the third game because it, it, it's really um, a matter of we've done things well, we've done things not so well. What, what have we capitalized on? What have they capitalized on? And who can play the closest to perfect football and um, and who can play harder, who can play f more physical and all that kind of stuff. And, and, that, and that's all it comes down to. Um, you know, these other two games, you know, it's, it's the playoffs now, so these other two games mean nothing. Um, we're, we're both here in the dance and, and um, you know, other than the familiarity of the opponent and, and, the, and the reps that you've gotten against them, um, everything can be different. So um, it's a matter of, trying to not outthink yourself all week and trying not to try to play a guessing game as to what they're going to do different um, and just focus on how to continue to get better. Everybody's going to wake up for it, you know, that you might not have another chance that we have one guaranteed game left. Um, we're here on Tuesday. We don't know if we're going to be here on – it's not guaranteed that we'll be back in this locker room next Tuesday or Wednesday to prepare for another football game. So that's the only thing I do now. So. Um, they feel the exact same way, so I'm sure those guys will be ready to go. Everybody will be ready to go. It'll be football at the highest level, and we'll see how it goes. When, when I look at this offense right now, I mean, it, there's so many weapons, that, and it just gets distributed among all you guys. That has to be a real confidence feeling that there's no one particular guy that people can concentrate on because somebody else can pick up the mantle if that happens. Yeah, we, have, we feel like we have a bunch of guys throughout the whole entire offense, throughout this whole locker room. Um, that can make plays, that can win football games. Um, and we have all of them together um, in this type of um, atmosphere with all this on the line. I'm excited to see what we do. Um, it'll be definitely fun for sure. Um, 
But now it's, it's more so anything, anything go, you know, during the season, it's you have your own personal stuff that you want to get done along with the team oriented goals. But now that's all that's all in the past. Everything, whether it's one ball, ten balls, fifteen balls, or no ball, like each play matters, whether that's affecting the game with the football or without it. So that's how we look at it. Um, and we'll see how it goes. And you might be the best example that you can have a half where we don't hear your name much. Maybe what you're doing largely involves blocking or whatever. And then a second half where you're an instrumental part of the offense because maybe they're concentrating on someone else. Does that take kind of a, a different mentality to go, I'm a key contributor to this game and I might not contribute for a half, but I got to be there in the second half? You got to be there at all times. Um, and that's something that I've, that I've been learning and going through my first three seasons in the league is you don't know when you're you don't know when it's gonna come. It might be the first play of the game, it might be the last play of the game. Either way you gotta make the play. Uh, I mean you gotta be ready uh, mentally to say, all right, if I don't touch the ball for fifty nine minutes or in sixtieth minute I might be caught on to make a play. So I gotta be mentally ready to, to be able to do that. So that's been a different part um, um, adjusting to and learning and growing through. But yeah. And you still have other things you can do in those 59 minutes too when, you end up, when the ball's not coming to you, don't you? Know, that's another thing that comes along with it. Oh yeah, for sure. When you go in, when you go in the film room, um, you're, getting, you're getting graded, you're getting judged off what you did in those 59 minutes, not what you did. You can have a great game. I've, I've realized that you can have a great game without touching the football. Um, you can have a great game with touching the football one time. And it's not, it doesn't have to do with, with that one time that you touched it. So we just look to try to affect the game in a positive way no matter what. Um, and, and when we got guys, 11 guys on offense doing the same thing, then we're really touching the beat. Brandon, how has your relationship with Brock evolved or changed from when he first stepped in to now? Um, first stepped into the starting role, I'll clarify. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to know him now a little bit more, being able to work with him a little bit more, um, being able to talk to him a little bit more, just talking football, seeing what type of dude he is. Um, but as we get more and more reps, you get to, you get to grow with him. Um, uh, he's doing a great job, um, but we're still growing. We'll go out there today and continue to, to grow. And we're just trying to see how far we can take it, where we can take it to, um, and just trying to look to elevate every single week.